So hello, good day everyone. Welcome to the course unit 9, the first topic for our finals. This is the decision making. Okay, decision making. Ano ba ang pumapasok sa utak nyo? What comes into your mind when you hear the word decision making? So, in every day of our lives, uh, we need or we we use this decision making. Nag-decision nag tayo whenever we choose something over the problem or opportunities. So, lawakan natin. What is decision making ba? Decision making. This is the process of identifying problems and opportunities and then resolving them. Diba? You need to make a choice kasi. So, sabi nga niya, it is the process of what? You need to identify two variables, the problem and the opportunity. Problem. Magdi-decision ka kapag nagka-problema ka. Magdi-decision ka din kapag merong magandang opportunity sa'yo. Diba? That is decision making. So, simply, decision is a choice made made from available alternatives. Kung ano man yung nagiging choice mo sa buhay, that is your decision. Diba? Decision making involves effort both before and after the actual choice. So, nag start ng decision making bago, bago ka mag-decide and also, it has a consequence na susundin mo or tatanggapin mo yung part na yun kasi you chose that one. So, every decision-making process produce an outcome that might be an action, a recommendation, or an opinion. So, decision-making is the essence of the management. So, as a good leader or as one of the aspects of the good leader, dapat good decision-maker sila. So, this is a one part of our interpersonal skills na tinatawag natin na kailangan ng ating mga leader is a good decision-maker. So, this Decision making is the essence of management, managerial functions like the planning, organizing, staffing, directing, coordinating, and controlling are carried through decisions. Lahat yan pinag-aralan naman na natin last uh, midterm. Okay. So, what are the categories ba of the management decisions? So, we have program and non-program. So, let's start first this, dito sa non-program na sinasabi niya. What is not... Dito sinasabi natin yung program pala. I'm sorry. Program decisions na sinasabi nila. What is program decision? It involves situations that have occurred often enough to enable decision rules to be developed and applied in future. Program decisions are made in response to recurring organizational problems. When you say program decisions, parang alam mo na yung magiging decision mo. Nakaprograma na. Kasi it is currently happening or nararanasan mo na sila. Nagagawa siya lagi or lagi siyang paulit-ulit. That is why you need to you you just need to develop your decision. It means it's already existing. 'Di ba? Existing na 'yan. Situations that are, that occurred often enough, paulit-ulit na lang. That is why sabi niya program decision. Kaya nga 'di ba sa mga work, 'di ba? Sa mga work. Kapag matagal ka na sa trabaho, biglang nagka problema, pero yung problemang 'yun alam niyo umulit na lang, 'di ba? Paulit-ulit na lang yung problemang 'yun. Alam niyo na din yung magiging decision ng mga kasama mo sa work. Alam mo na yung magiging response ng leader niyo or ng boss niyo. That is a program decision. Kasi you already know what would be your choice kapag nangyari yung problem na yun or opportunity na yun. So, that is a program decision. Next, what is a non-program decision naman? So, kabalik taran. So, non-program decisions are made in response to situations that are unique, are poorly defined and largely unstructured, and have important consequence for the organization. Ito yung non-program. Kaka-iba uh, or malayo sa program. Kasi sa program, di ba, alam mo na. Sa non-program, ito yung mga biglang contingency, pabigla-bila, emergency. So, you need to respond to that uh, unique situation, poorly defined, hindi mo alam, bago lang sa'yo. And you need to have a choice and that is your decision. So, facing uncertainty and ambiguity. So, what is uncertainty? Diba? Ibig sabihin, hindi ka sure. Uh, ambiguity parang uh, masyadong malayo or parang dark, ganyan. One primary difference between program and non-program, decisions relate to the degree of uncertainty. Bakit? Sa program decisions kasi, sigurado ka na eh. Diba nga? Kasi nga, paulit-ulit na nangyayari yan. Alam mo na na kapag ganito decision mo, alam mo na yung mangyayari. Not unlike kay non-program decision, kapag nangyayari itong bagay nito, dahil bago siya, so, uncertain ka. Hindi ka sigurado ano kayang mangyayari. Kaya, mahirapang kang mag-decide. So, degree of uncertainty, the risk and the ambiguity that managers deal with within the making the decision. So, that is the categories of management decision, program, and non program.
So, what are the conditions that affect the possibility of decision failure? So, alam no, the low center certainty, risk uncertainty, and ambiguity. So, kapag uh, mababa lang yung kasiguraduhan mo, mataas ang risk, mataas ang pagdududa, hindi ka sure, the more na nagiging dark yung, uh, yung decision mo or parang uh, you, you will fall out or parang mat matatalo ka in the future. So, sa, uh, sa program decisions, uh, pareho lang naman. Program decisions and non-program decisions still, kaya ka nagdi-decide is to give solution to the problem. So, those are the conditions that affect the possibility of decision failure. So, let's just give an uh, definition of terms. Okay? Certainty. What is certainty? Certainty means that all the information the decision maker needs is fully available. Managers have information on operating conditions, resource costs, or constraints, and each course of action and possible outcome. When we're talking about certainty, we're talking about the be of being sure, ibig sabihin, alam mo na, fully available mo na, lahat ng resources mo, lahat ng conditions, alam mo na. You are very well known because it is certain. Yan. Ano naman yung risk, ma'am? So, risk means the decision has a clear-cut goals and that good information is available. But, the future outcomes associated with each alternative are subject to some chance of loss or failure. Yung risk, uh, di ba, magdi-decision ka, but you need to accept the risk. Low risk ba or high risk? High risk na maging... The more nagiging high risk, parang ito kasi yung danger eh. Okay? Ibig sabihin sabi niya, these are clear-cut goals. This is the danger. So, kailangan alam mo, kailangan mong i-face yung risk na sinatawag na yan. It's either low ba or high. Next, we also have uncertainty. Takabalik taran lang naman ng certainty. It means being unsure. Means the managers know which goals they wish to achieve, but information about alternatives and future events is incomplete. Ibig sabihin, alam mo naman yung goals mo, yung gusto mong marating. Pero kapag nagiging uncertain yan, ibig sabihin, you are not very sure kung paano mo kukuhan yung goal na yan. Okay, that is uncertainty. Then we also have the last one, the ambiguity. It is by far... The most difficult decision situation, okay? It means that the goals to be achieved or the problem to be solved is really unclear. Yan, kapag ambiguity. Kasi parang darkness dito eh, kapag ambiguity siya. Yung kahit na, parang ganto lang o, oh, sa pag-ibig nyo, di ba? Yung mamahalin mo siya kahit hindi mo alam kung uh, kapag you're very unclear yung, uh, yung relationship nyo, Tapos, uh, pero go na go ka lang din. That is ambiguity. It means the goals to be achieved or the problem to be solved is very unclear. Alternatives are difficult to define and information about outcomes is unavailable. So, that is ambiguity. Yan. Oh, Nagbubuhay na kayo dahil sininggit na naman yung mga hugot. Okay. So, how can we have or paano ba nagaganap yung decision-making process? Tanungin nyo yung sarili nyo. Diba? Paano kayo nagdi-decision sa mga bagay-bahay natin dito sa mundo? So, decision-making process. So, whether a decision is program or non-program, and regardless of whether managers choose choose the classical, administrative, or political model of decision-making, six steps is typically associated with effective decision process. What are those six steps? Ito. Number one, the recognition of decision requirement. Yan. So, parang... Ano ba? Ano ba yung pag-decision mo? It's either problem ba or opportunity. Then, you're going to diagnose. So, diagnosis and analysis of causes. Yan. After that, development of alternatives. Yung hahanapin mo yung mga choices mo. Yan. And then, selection of desired alternatives. Sa lahat ng naging choices mo na magiging possible solution dun sa opportunity or problem na yun, you were going to select. Diba? You're going to select which one best fits for you. And then after that, you're going to implement. So after mong nag-decide, you're going to implement the chosen alternative. After nun, diba, kapag, uh, syempre, natanggap mo na yung decision mo na ganito, you're going to evaluate and feedback. Bakit? Syempre, tama ba yung naging decision ko na nag-aral akong ganito? Diba? So doon papasok kasi yung regret and... Uh, pag alam mo if tama ba or hindi ang pinasukan mo or yung decision mo sa buhay. So, kailangan mo talagang ini-evaluate yung mga decision mo sa buhay para nalaman mo kung saan ka nagkakamali at nagkukulang or kung anong kailangan mo improve. Para sa susunod, kung mangyayari yan ulit, ba Kung mangyayari yan ulit sa organization man, sa sarili mong buhay or sa anumang department, still, magbabago na yung decision mo or magbabago na yung choice mo. At yan naman tayo natututo eh. 
diba? from those mistakes. Eh, mas maganda kung yung naging decision mo is naging tama. So, therefore, kung nangyari ulit sa'yo yung ganung opportunity or problem, you know how to respond. Ibig sabihin, nagiging certain ka na, nagiging program na ang pagiging decision mo. So, those are the six steps of decision-making process. So, we have decision-making models. Okay, may mga models tayong sinusundan. So, the approach that managers use to make decision usually falls into a three types. It's either classical model, administrative model, and political model. So, the choice of model depends on the manager's personal preference, whether the decision is program or non-program, and the degree of uncertainty associated with the decision. Okay, let's start with the classical model. So, the classical model is also known as the ideal rational model. Pag sinabing rational or ideal, pinag-isipan. So, classical model is based on rational economic assumptions and manager believes about what ideal decision making should be. Kung ano yung mas makakabuti sa lahat. So, what are the four assumptions of classical model? Ito. So, the decision maker operates to accomplish goals that are known and agreed on. Dapat alam. Problems are precisely formulated and defined. So, the decision maker strives for conditions of certainty, gathering complete information, all alternatives or your choices, and the potential results of each are calculated. Kasi nga, sabi ko, ang classical model, ito yung nag-decision ka na pinag-iisipan mo lahat. Kasi it is being, you want it to be ideal and rational. Okay, next. So, ano pa yung mga ano niya, uh, assumptions niya? Ito, criteria for evaluating alternatives are known. So, ine-evaluate mo yung mga choices mo kapag ration or kapag classical model ang decision making natin. So, ine-evaluate mo, tinitingnan mo lahat ng choices mo. Pag ito ba yung naging choices ko, ano mangyayari sa akin? Pag ito yung naging choice ko, ano mangyayari sa organization namin? So, the decision maker selects the alternative that will. Ano yung magiging ano niya? Ano yung i-choose niya? That will maximize the economic return to the organization. So, the decision maker is rational. Yan, and use logic to assign values, order, preferences, evaluate alternatives, and make decisions that will maximize the attainment of organizational goals. Yan. Talagang pag-uusipan mo, full information ka when it comes to classical model. So, classical model is normative, sabi niya. So, this defines uh, how a decision, a decision maker should make decision. It does not describe how managers make decision. Sa classical models kasi, sinasabi niya, ito yung mga dapat mong gawin. Okay, ito yung mga dapat mong sundin. Ito yung mga dapat mong decision. Should siya. Hindi niya din describe kung paano ka magdi-decide. Okay, it doesn't answer the questions of how. But, sinis, uh, tinut, uh, tinuturo niya or nililid niya yung model na to na ito dapat ang sundan mo or ito dapat ang magiging decision mo. So, the classical model is most useful when applied to program decisions. Very good. Kasi program decisions kasi ito, ibig sabihin, uh, certain na. So, alam mong mangyari yan ulit. Yan. Kasi nga, Pa, kaya para kung malingyari man yan ulit, napag-isipan mo ng buo. And to decisions character by, characterized by certainty or risk because relevant information is available and probabilities can be calculated. So, ibig sabihin, na-assume mo na, na-expect mo na kung ano ang mangyayari when it comes to that kind of decision. So, that is classical model. The next model that we have is what we called administrative model. So, what is administrative model naman? So, the administrative model recognizes the human and environmental limitations that affect the degree to which managers can pursue a rational decision-making process. So, administrative model is descriptive, meaning that there is a descri it describes how managers actually make decisions in complex situations rather than dictating how they should make decisions according to a theoretical ideal. So, Nakita niyo ba yung difference? Sa classical model, tinuturo niya kung ano yung dapat. Kung ano dapat ang i-decision mo, kung ano dapat yung tama. Yun ang classical. Sa administrative model, ine-explain dito how. How. Okay. Paano ka dapat mag sasagot or paano ka dapat magbibigay ng decision. So, based on the work of Herbert A. Simon, Simon, 
He proposed two concepts that were instrumental in shaping the administrative model. Ano yon? The bounded rationality and satisfying. So ano yung bounded rationality and satisfying? So bounded rationality means the people have limits. Yan, alam mo yung limits mo. Boundaries on how rational they can be. So, organizations are incredibly complex and managers have the time and ability to process only a limited account of information with which to make decisions. So, ibig sabihin, diba sinuturo niya kasi dito how, kung paano ka magdi-decide. So, kung isa sa way para matuto natin or malaman natin kung how or paano ka magdidesisyon is number one, kailangan may bounded rationality ka. Alam mo lang yung limit mo. Alam mo yung boundaries mo kung paano ka magiging rational. So, because managers do not have the time, sabi niya, or cognitive ability to process complete information. Very magkaiba sa classical, di ba? Sa classic model kasi, kailangan meron silang full information. Pero dito kay uh, tinatawag nating administrative model, yung mga managers natin, kulang kasi yung time na mag-isip na alamin lahat. Okay? So, that is why ang sinasabi niya, tuturuan na lang sila kung paano dapat sila mag decision So, what is satisfying naman? So, satisfying means that the decision maker choose first solution alternative that satisfies minimal decision criteria. Kung ano yung na, na, na Uh, nauna niyang naging desisyon yun na susundan. So, rather than pursuing all alternatives to identify the single solution that will maximize economic returns, managers will opt for the first solution that appears to solve the problem, even if better solutions are presumed to exist. The decision maker cannot justify the time and expense of obtaining complete information. So, that is satisfying. Pag sinabi natin satisfying, kapag nakita mo na ito na yung choice mo, may first choice ko na, yun na yun. You will not look up to another alternative. To, you will not look up to another choices uh, doon sa problema ng yun. Okay? Kapag sinabi natin satisfying, kasi limited lang yung time mo, di ba? You have your bounded rationality. So, you just need to choose. Kaya nga how, di ba? So, you just need to choose yung uh, sa tingin mong una mong naisip para masolusyonan yung problem na yan or opportunity. So, what are the assumptions of administrative model? So, decision goals often are vague, conflicting, lack of consensus among managers. Managers often are unaware of problems or opportunities that exist in the organization. That is really ano, true. Kasi nga, di ba, sa administrative model, you, are, you have the set of limitations and boundaries. So, therefore, kulang kasi yung time mo. Hindi mo siya inaalam. Not unlike kay classic model. Sa classic model kasi, parang sa, tinuturo niya ano dapat ang decision mo. Pero da, bago ka mapunta dun sa ano dapat ang decision mo, kailangan alamin mo muna lahat ng variables na existence. Lahat ng um, tawag dito, pwedeng mangyari. Lahat ng choices. Okay? So, rational procedures are not always used. And when they are, they are confined to simplistic view of the problem that does not capture the complexity of real organizational events. So, managers' searches for alternatives are limited because of human information and resource constraints. Most managers settle for satisfying. O yung pinipili, or sina, uh, pinipili yung, yung first decision nila or yung first choice nila as a decision then a maximizing solution. So, partly because they have limited information and partly because they have only vague criteria for what constitutes a maximizing solution. Pag konti na lang yung time nila and konti lang yung uh, information nila, kung ano lang yung una nilang naisip na gagawin or ano yung decision nila, yun ang susundin. So, those are the assumptions of administrative model. Now, let's have this one. Intuition and quasi-rationality. So, what is intuition? Lahat tayo may intuition. Intuition represents a quick apprehension of a decision situation based on past experience but without conscious thought. Yan. Intuitive decision making is not arbitrary or irrational because it is based on years of practice and hands-on experience. Ang intuition kasi... Uh, palagi ka na dyan eh. Ito na yung palagay mo na magiging decision mo dahil uh, this is brought beyond the uh, brought from the past experiences. Yan. Next, we also have quasi-rationality. Quasi-rationality means combining intuitive and analytical thought. 
So, mas maganda to. So, in many situations, neither analysis nor intuition is sufficient for making a good decision. However, sabi niya, managers may often walk a fine line between two extremes. On one hand, making arbitrary decisions without careful study and on the other hand, relying obsessively obsessively on rational analysis. So, one is not better than the other. So, and managers need to take balanced approach by considering both rationality and intuition. Yung naging, na, naging palagay ka na at pag, yung pag-iisipan mo siya. At ang tawag natin doon is quasi-rationality. So, as important components of effective decision making. Again, intuition, it means uh, based on the years of practice and hands-on experience. Kaya, yun ang magiging decision mo. Ang quasi-rationality naman, it is a combination of analytical thought and intuitive. Yan. So, we're down with the last model. So, what is the last model? The political model. As we, as we all know, magkabaliktad na magkabaliktad itong si classic model at saka si what we call administrative model. Ngayon, alamin naman natin, what is political model? Political model is useful for making non-program decisions. When conditions are uncertain, information is limited, and presence of manager conflicts about what goes to pursue or what course of action to take. So, the best daw gamitin ang political model kapag non-program decision ang gagawin natin. So, the political model takes into considerations that many decisions require debate, discussions, and coalition building. So, managers often engage in a coalition building for making complex organizational decisions. Coalition means an informal alliance among managers who support a specific goal. So, what are the assumptions of political model? Again, Maganda daw pong gawin ang tinatawag nating as a uh, political model when it comes to decision making kapag non-program or uncertain yung mga nangyayari. So, what are the assumptions of political model? Organizations are made up of groups with diverse interests, goals, and politicals. Kasi sa political model, kailangan kapag magde-decide ka, you, you need to hear. Okay, the, yung sasabihin ng mga kasama mo. Managers disagree about problems, priorities, and may not understand or share the goals and interests of other managers. So, information is ambiguous and incomplete. Yung totoo naman, kasi nga, uh, uncertain ka dun sa mangyayari, di ba? So, the attempt to be rational is limited by the complexity of many problems as well as personal and organizational constraints. So, managers do not have the time, resources, or mental capacity to identify all dimensions of the problem and process all relevant informations. Managers talk to each other and exchange viewpoints to gather information and reduce ambiguity. So, managers engage in the push and pull debate to decide goals and discuss alternatives. Decisions are best. Decisions are the result of bargaining and discussion among coalition members. Ito yung bago ka mag-discuss kapag sinabi natin yung political model. Kailangan mo munang mag um, connive or tanungin din yung mismong masasabi ng members mo. Okay? So, we will come up to an agreement. So, characteristics of classical, administrative, and political Decision making. Tingnan nyo. Classical model, clear cut problems, condition of certainty. Kasi alam mo talaga to, sigurado ka, full information, madami kang time para malaman yung full information na yan about alternatives and their outcomes. Rational choice by individual for maximum, maximizing outcomes. So, magdi-decision ka para sa nakakabuti ng lahat. Next, administrative model naman, vague problem and goals, condition of uncertainty, and hindi sigurado, limited information about alternatives, kaya naman uh, meron silang, uh, ano lang, uh, what we call this, parang limitations, di ba? Uh, hanggang saan lang yung pwede lang malaman. So, satisfying, what is satisfying again? It means this is the, susundin mo yung first decision mo. Satisfying choice for resolving problems using intuition. And the last one is political model. It, it means pluralistic conflicting goals. So, ang condition naman niya, uncertainty and ambiguity, consistent viewpoints, ambiguous information, and bargaining the discussion among coalition members. Ito na yung pinag-uusapan nyo muna kung ano ang gagawin nyo. So, those are the three models of decision making. So, that ends of my recorded discussion about course unit 9. Thank you.